Government of India constituted on April 10, 1969 Godavari Water Disputes Tribunal and Krishna Water Disputes Tribunal separately to adjudicate the river water utilization disputes among the river basin states of Interstate Rivers Godavari and Krishna under the provisions of Interstate River Water Disputes Act Euro 1956. Incidentally, both the tribunals were headed by Sri R. S. Bachawat as its chairman with Sri Dam Bondari and Sri Dam Sen as its members. Godavari River Basin is spread in the states of Maharashtra, Orissa, Old Madhya Pradesh later bifurcated into present Madhya Pradesh and Katiskar, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh. Krishna River Basin states Maharashtra, Karnataka and Andhra Pradesh insisted on the quicker verdict of the KWDT as it had become more expedient for the construction of irrigation projects in Krishna River Basin. So the proceedings of GWDT could not start till the KWDT final verdict was submitted to GOI on May 27, 1976. Before the state's reorganization in the year 1956, Planning Commission on July 27, 1951 conducted a meeting of the then Godavari River Basin states Bombay State, Hyderabad State, Madras State and Madhya Pradesh State excluding Orissa State to discuss and finalize the Godavari River water utilization among the riparian states. The Memorandum of Agreement was prepared and later ratified by the participant states. This agreement says that the water allocations shall be reviewed after 25 years. Since the old agreement is about to lapse shortly, all five states of Godavari River Basin signed a new agreement on December 19, 1975 relating to the sanction and clearance of the projects in accordance with certain bilateral agreements entered between them after the GWDT formation. This agreement together with its annexures was filed before the GWDT on July 12, 1976. This good gesture expressing voluntary cooperation on the part of the disputing states made further job of GWDT less difficult. The states of Orissa, Katiskar could not achieve concurrence with Andhra Pradesh and Palavaram Dam FRL slash MWL, spillway design capacity and floodgates operation schedule during flood season. GWDT has adjudicated this issue and its decision is given in clause VI of its final order. The rest of the final order deals with definition of a Euro water use a Euro unregistered trademark, a Euro water use measurement a Euro unregistered trademark, a Euro water use and losses accounting in a water year from the storage in a reserve or a Euro unregistered trademark, a Euro export of Godavari waters to other river basins a Euro unregistered trademark, a Euro agreements related to the Godavari river a Euro unregistered trademark, a Euro Godavari Waters a Euro unregistered trademark etc. to interpret and implement the various agreements between the states. The final report of the GWDT was furnished to GOI on July 7, 1980 for government approval and notification. GOI accepted the GWDT verdict and made it binding on the river basin states in the year 1980. Water Allocations the water used under the existing slash completed major, medium and minor irrigation projects up to 61,975 is protected in all the states. The water use sanctions slash cleared up to 61,975 for the major, medium and minor irrigation projects is also protected in all the states. The river basin is mainly bifurcated into following broad areas to share river water, the catchment area located upstream of Pukampadu Dam site. Rest of the river downstream of Pukampadu Dam site including major tributaries Pranhita, Indravati and Saberi. Equals U.S. of Pukampadu Dam site equals, this river basin area is further subdivided into following areas, catchment area U.S. The Pathan Dam site on Godavari, all the water available up to Pathan Dam site is allotted to Mr. for its use. Catchment area U.S. Siddhishwa Dam site on Purna tributary. All the water available up to Sideswa Dam site is allotted to Mr. for its use. Catchment area U.S. Nizamzaga Dam site on Manjira tributary, Karnataka can use 13.10 thousand million cubic feet under Karanja project and 1.17 TMC under Shikinala project, Mr. can use 22 TMC up to Nizamzaga Dam site on Manjira river, AP can draw 4 TMC for drinking water of Hyderabad city. 
58 TMC is agreed in protected water use under the existing Nizamsaga project. 1 TMC water lifting from the Vanjira River is allowed by Karnataka. Catchment area U.S. of Pukampadu Dam site but below Nizamsaga, Sideswa and Pathan Dam sites, Mr. should not use more than 60 TMC in a water year from the waters of this area. As submitted to the Supreme Court, Mr. was using slash developing projects for 42 TMC water utilization in this catchment area prior to June 10, 1975 agreement with AP. The total permitted water usage from the water generated in this catchment area by Mr. is 102 TMC. K should not use more than 2.5 TMC in a water year and April is at liberty to use remaining waters available at Pocampadu Dam site. Supreme Court verdict on Babli project dispute stipulated that the gates of the Pauli Barrage remain lifted during the monsoon season, that is, July 1st to October 28th and there is no obstruction to the natural flow of Godavari River during monsoon season below the three dams mentioned in Clause 2, I, of the agreement dated June 10, 1975 towards Pukampad Dam. Thus Pokampadu Reservoir is accorded first priority over any other reservoir to receive the water generated from the Godavari Basin area located below these three dams. As stipulated by Supreme Court, Central Government has set up Monitoring Committee to implement slash supervise the water sharing as per agreement dated June 10, 1975 and Supreme Court verdict. Equals DS of Pukampadu Dam Site equals, Mr. AP and old MP states can use 300 TMC each and ERISA can use 200 TMC for new projects slash users. This river catchment area is further subdivided into following areas, catchment area US Lower Penganga Dam on Penganga Tributary, all the water available up to Lower Penganga Dam is allotted to Mr. Subject to the condition that this project would be taken up as joint project of Mr. and AP. Border Subbasin MP should not use more than 9 TMC for its existing, ongoing and proposed projects US of Upper Water Project of Mr. MP can also use additionally 1 TMC for its existing, ongoing and proposed projects located in the remaining sub-basin. Indravati Tributary, Orissa State can use all the water of Indravati Tributary in its territory except 45 TMC subject to the condition that minimum 85 TMC is exported outside the Godavari Basin from the upper Indravati project. During the water years, when the water export is below 85 TMC, the water made available to Katiskar State is proportionately reduced. Katiskar State should not use more than 273 TMC US of Bhopalapeshnam Hydroelectric Project in Indravati Sub Basin. Sabari Tributary, Orissa State can use all the water of Sabri Tributary up to the point where Sabari River forms common boundary between Orissa and Katiskar States. Additionally, Orissa can use not exceeding 40 TMC from the projects located in its territory for its existing, ongoing, and new projects. Further Orissa can use not exceeding 27 TMC by withdrawals from the Sibari Main River up to Siluru River confluence point for its existing, ongoing and new projects. Katiskar State can use all the water of Sabri tributary up to the point where Sibari River forms common boundary between Orissa and Katiskar States. Additionally, Katiskar can use all the available water US of the listed projects located in its territory for its existing ongoing and new projects. Further Katiskar can use not exceeding 18 TMC by withdrawals from the Sibari Main River up to Siluru River confluence point for its existing, ongoing and new projects. Siluru Subbasin, the states of Orissa and AP shall continue to use as per the earlier agreement dated 4 September 1962 and 1946 agreement between Madras and Orissa states. Interstate Projects these agreements also permit to construct various interstate projects such as Pukampadu project between Mr. and AP, Lower Penganga project between Mr. and AP, Pranhita barrages between Mr. and AP, Lendi project between Mr. and AP, Bhopal Pejnam hydroelectric project between Mr. and Katiskar, Inchampali project between Mr., Katiskar and AP, Lower Siluru irrigation scheme between AP and Orissa. Palavaram project between Orissa, Katiskar and AP, future projects across Sibari River between Orissa and Katiskar, 
Singu project between Karnataka and AP, storage projects located in MP for water use in Mr., etc. Scientific approach, when rain falls on the land mass, soil absorbs a part of rainwater and remaining part of the rainwater joins the nearby stream by flowing on the surface of soil. Some of the water absorbed by the soil gets evaporated from the soil, some part of the remaining water in the soil emerges into the surface stream as seepage flows and rest of water collects in the underground aquifer as groundwater. This process also takes place when the land is irrigated by surface water. The surface runoff and the subsurface seepage out of the total rainfall is the available water in the river basin after deducting the natural evaporation loss from the naturally formed water bodies in the river basin in a water year. The water thus available is called primary water supplies slash flows in a river. If there is no groundwater extraction, over a period of time all groundwater aquifers get saturated fully and further groundwater percolation to the aquifers would join the river streams as enhanced seepage flows slash base flows. Thus any underground water extraction slash use from the river basin aquifers reduce the primary water flows in the river basin. When river water is used in surface irrigation, the part of water joining the stream is termed as a euro return flows a euro unregistered trademark and the part of water joining the aquifer is termed as a euro seepage loss a euro unregistered trademark or man-made groundwater charging. The sum of primary water supplies and return flows in a river basin is the total water available for use. The total available water for use in a river basin is almost one and a half times the primary water supplies if net groundwater use is also accounted. If groundwater use is intensive or close to groundwater mining, the return flows would be during heavy rains period only which are below 10% of primary water supplies in the river basin. There would be negligible base flows into the river streams during the remaining period and good chance of river turning into losing stream due to unsustainable groundwater exploitation. Both evaporation loss and seepage loss take place in man-made water works such as canals, reservoirs, ponds, tanks, percolation ponds slash meadows, sewage treatment plants, water harvesting slash groundwater recharging works slash contour bunding of fields, etc. Many times land is used for enhanced groundwater charging from rainwater by constructing contour bunds to the fields for better soil moisture and salty euro unregistered trademark s leaching from the topsoil. All these works are either man-made reservoirs or man-made other works as explained in Clause 3b and C of Final Order of GWDT. Water reservoir creates space to store water for various requirements such as domestic, municipal, irrigation, industrial, production of power, navigation, carryover storage in future year a Euro unregistered trademark s use, pisciculture, wildlife protection and recreation purposes. Clause 2 declares each of above purposes water use along with the evaporation loss from the associated storage. The sum of all storages associated with all water uses is the total storage of all man-made reservoirs and other works. The loss of water by seepage is due to natural cause slash phenomenon from the man-made reservoirs and other man-made works. Clause 3a defines how the water use is quantified slash measured for domestic, municipal, irrigation, industrial production of power and diversions outside the Godavari River Basin area. Clause 3b defines how a water use from the man-made reservoirs and other works are measured for remaining uses which are not covered under Clause 3a. Every man-made reservoir or Euro unregistered trademark s water is invariably used for pisciculture, wildlife survival, navigation, recreation. Etc. Additionally, though main water uses for irrigation or domestic or industrial requirements. So the actual seepage loss from the man-made reservoirs and other works are to be accounted under water uses for pisciculture, wildlife protection, navigation, recreational purposes as per Clause 3b. Clause I declares that groundwater use shall not be reckoned as river water use. In Godavari Basin the groundwater use exceeds surface slash river water use in irrigation, etc. So the actual return flows available would not exceed 10% of primary water supply of the river. Thus as an exception in case of irrigation use, Clause 2b aptly says that the extent of return flows shall not be deducted from the water lifted slash diverted for the irrigation use. Also, 
it implies that return flows deduction is applicable for water uses under domestic and municipal water supply and industrial purpose at the rate of 80% and 97.5% respectively. Clause 3C very clearly says seepage and evaporation water losses to the extent of actual depletion from a man-made reservoir shall be accounted under water use in each water year whether stored water is put to use or not. The water diverted from a reservoir in a water year shall be considered as water use in that water year only. Mere creation of water storage in a reservoir in a water year is not reckoned as water use in that water year. Thus GWDT allows creation of carryover storage in reservoirs for future years use when surplus river water is available in a water year to meet water shortfall in the river in future water deficit years up to the permitted water uses. This clause implies that the water use permits are from average annual water availability in the river. Clause 8b defines a Euro Godavari water as a Euro unregistered trademark as water of the mainstream of the Godavari River, all its tributaries and all other streams contributing water directly or indirectly to the Godavari River. Clause 3c implies that any temporary or permanent man-made pond constructed across any stream slash point in Godavari River Basin slash system to obstruct and impound the natural flow of Godavari waters shall be considered as man-made reservoir whatever may be its storage capacity. It also very clearly says seepage and evaporation water losses to the extent of actual depletion from a man-made reservoir in a water year shall be accounted under water use in that water year equals available water for use equals, from the above elaboration of clauses I to 4 of GWDT final order, the total available water in a water year from the Godavari River is some of, primary water supplies slash flows in a water year, carryover storage is available in man-made reservoirs and other works at the beginning of the water year, return flows from the domestic and municipal water supply within the basin at the rate of 80% in that water year and, Return flows from the industrial supply within the basin at the rate of 97.5%. In that water year. Equals total water use equals, from the above elaboration of clauses I to 4 of GWDT final order, the total water use in a water year from the Godavari River shall be measured as sum of following, 100% of irrigation water supplies made available to minor, supplementary irrigation, medium irrigation and major irrigation. 20% of domestic and municipal water supply made available in Godavari River Basin, 2.5% of water supplies made available for the industrial use within the Godavari River Basin. 100% of water supplies made available for diversion outside the Godavari River Basin. The extent of depletion of water as evaporation loss from the water storages in all man-made reservoirs and other works which shall include canals, reservoirs, ponds, tanks, percolation ponds slash meadows, sewage treatment plants, water harvesting slash groundwater recharging works slash rain-fed cultivated fields with contour bonds, etc. The extent of depletion of water as seepage loss from the water storage in all man-made reservoirs and other works which shall include canals, reservoirs, ponds, tanks, percolation ponds slash meadows, sewage treatment plants, water harvesting slash groundwater recharging works slash rain-fed cultivated fields with contour bonds, etc. There is surplus water available in the river in 75% of water years after meeting the total water use allocations by GWDT, present and future groundwater use, for the moderate environmental flow requirements in salt export or alkalinity control in Godavari River. The manner water drawal and losses are considered under water uses and measured in a scientific way as incorporated in the GWDT final order by the jury chaired by Sri R. S. Bachawat and its technical advisors is highly commendable when the present understanding in India of a river Basina Euro unregistered trademark s development phases and its implications are esoteric even after three decades from the notification of GWDT verdict. Ongoing controversies Nizamsaga Project and Singu Reservoir. Palavara Project, Alamila Project and Jalaput Project. See also, Indian Rivers Interlink, Inchampali Project, Godavari River Basin Irrigation Projects, Kaveri River Water Dispute, Basalt Rock Weathering. External links, Major and Medium Dams and Barrages Location Map in India, IWMI Research Report Nose No. 1, 3, 14. 56, 
72,111,121,123, etc. Indian climate change from Harappa period. Deccan basalt volcanism, Geological Survey of India. References, Godavari Water Disputes Tribunal Final Report. 1980. Retrieved March 21, 2014. The Interstate River Water Disputes Act, 1956, as modified up to August 6, 2002. Government of India. Retrieved March 21, 2012. Godavari River Basin Map, Godavari Basin Status Report. Government of India. Retrieved March 21, 2015. GWDT Award. Government of India. Retrieved March 21, 2015. AB Supreme Court Verdict on Bapuli Project Dispute. February 2013. Retrieved March 21, 2013. Center sets up panel on Babli. Retrieved October 19, 2013. Dams, barrages, weirs, and cuts and lifts in Godavari River Basin. Retrieved March 11, 2015. IWMI Research Report 83. Spatial Variation in Water Supply and Demand Across River Basins of India. Retrieved August 23, 2012. Central Water Commission, GOI. Real-time Integrated Operation of Reservoirs. Retrieved January 23, 2013. Wetlands Atlas of India. Retrieved August 25, 2012. V. Smalkton and M. Pothers. An Assessment of Environmental Flow Requirements of Indian River Basins. Retrieved August 25, 2012. J. Keller, A. Keller and G. Davids. River Basin Development Phases and Implications of Closure. Retrieved August 25, 2012. David Sekala. The New Era of Water Resources Management, From Dry to Wet Water Savings. Retrieved January 25, 2013. Andrew Keller, Jack Keller, and David Sekula. Integrated Water Resource Systems, Theory and Policy Implications. Retrieved January 5, 2014. Ensesite Hall. Godavari River Water Sharing Accord. Retrieved January 23, 2013. Central Water Commission, GOI. 1962 Agreements, pages 239 to 242 inches. Retrieved January 23, 2013.